Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Sassy Show. I'm your host Sid and I'm very excited to have with me today Neer Zook, founder and CTO of Palo Alto Networks. Neer, welcome to the Sassy Show. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me, Sid. Thanks for making time for us today. So Neer, I'm so excited to be talking to you and there's so many things I want to ask you, but the topic of our show is Sassy or Secure Access Service Edge. So could you describe for the audience in about a couple of minutes, what does SASE mean to you and why is it such a big deal? Yeah, there are different ways to describe SASE. You know, technically, as you said, Secure Access Service Edge, it's about taking all your security services, and by the way, a lot of networking services like routing and QoS, and pushing them to the edge of the cloud. Mm -hmm. So you don't do them on premise, you do them in the cloud. But that's just the dry definition, and we're going to skip it for now. I think yeah. more importantly, what brought us to SASE is that the security industry, the cybersecurity industry is notorious for uh, every time there is a new challenge, solving that challenge with a new solution, mm -hmm. rather than trying to take whatever you already have and extending it. So access, users accessing applications is one of these areas. Traditionally, when users needed to access applications, you know, 25 years ago, they the applications were deployed on premise. The, the user access was very simple. It's usually using modems mm -hmm. and, yeah. and stuff like that. So you, you used what's called a VPN, virtual private network, remote access VPN. You run a client on the endpoint. You connect to a server or a VPN concentrator running on premise, authenticate yourself, and then you connect to the application, which is also on premise. Mm -hmm. Then as applications started moving to the cloud, we needed to access applications in the cloud. We tried to use VPNs for that, meaning going to the office and then, or the data center and going out, yeah. that doesn't work. Yeah. So we changed to a proxy-based approach where you connect with a proxy to the application. With SaaS applications, we needed yet another solution. So CASB, Cloud Access Security Broker, was born. You need partner access to applications, usually done using what's called SSL VPN, clientless VPN. And I remember in the mid 2000s, 2000, Two, I think it was 2003, I was CTO of Netscape and we acquired mm -hmm. uh, an SSL VPN company just to do that on top of our firewalls and on top of our VPN access and so on. So over time, depending on who the user is, depending on where they sit, depend on, depending on what access technology they use, and depending on where the application is, mm -hmm. we use different solutions. Right. And SASE is a way to take all these different use cases any user, any location, any connectivity method, SD1, IPsec, client VPN, clientless VPN, proxy, uh, browser isolation, uh, direct connections, whatever it is, any user, any location, any access method, any application in any location, private, public, SaaS, and combining all of those into a single coherent, single policy system, mm -hmm. which is also cloud delivered, delivered from the edge of the cloud. Right. That's interesting. So. Um, this, how, how important is the cloud, the hyperscalers? I mean, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, why now? Like, why, why SASE now? Why is it such a critical inflection point now and not five years ago and not five years later? Is it like a confluence of events around the hyperscale architectures being ready to deliver these kind of services? Yes, we're living at a time where compute is publicly available yeah. as much as you want. Yeah. And if we wanted to do it 10 years ago, we would have and go and deploy hardware in different data centers. There are actually vendors that tried it, like the proxy in the cloud vendors. They're mm -hmm. trying to do that. They, they run out of yeah. private data centers and deploy equipment there and they keep running into, you know, not having enough hardware. It, it just doesn't work. You know, with the public cloud, with, with hyperscalers out there that are willing to give you as much compute as you need, as much bandwidth as you need, uh, providing AI services so you can run your security much better and, and so on, it is now the right time to, to do that. Right. It's also a question of uh, uh, global um, deployment. Right. You, know, you want to be deployed in as many locations around the world. You don't want to be backhauling traffic Yep. across uh, too long of a distance. So you need to be deployed in dozens of countries around the world, maybe even more than 100 locations around the world. Yeah, you could do it yourself probably in your own data centers, but nobody's going to do that. Yeah. Hyperscale providers, AWS, Azure, GCP, and so on are probably the right solution. Makes a lot of sense. So one of the things that I find gets overlooked in the SASE conversation is the connectivity portion. Obviously, SASE is about the convergence of the connectivity which through SD-WAN and the security services consolidated. 
So how do you see that trend? And do you think organizations are placing a lot of importance on the convergence of connectivity and security? As part of this? Some are, some don't. I recommend to all of them that they do. And, and the deployments that I've seen where the goal is not just to converge security, but also to converge connectivity, those deployments have been much more successful, much more cost efficient, right. and also they're easier to extend. Meaning if you open a new branch office, if you hire 10,000 new employees, you acquire another company and you need to, to, uh, to take your security infrastructure and apply it to the organization you just acquired. When you think about SASE as a combination of networking and security, and you integrate both together, meaning you, you make SD1 part of that and remote access part of that, and you make clientless VPN access of that and, and so on, you become much more successful. So there would be uh, integration by means of sharing application context between the connectivity and the security parts of the architecture, having common management console. Is that, is that kind of what you're talking about? Let's take SD1 as an example. You could choose a third party SD1 vendor as part of your SASE deployment. And, and we support that, right? And, and I'm sure our competitors support that as well. Meaning uh, we will support SD1 connectivity, we will terminate it in the cloud, and then we'll apply security and so on. It works, yes. It's certainly suboptimal. Mm -hmm. There are things that we just can't do when we don't control both ends of the connection. Mm -hmm. uh, things like uh, autonomous uh, digital experience management, where you measure the experience from the user perspective mm -hmm. uh, of, of the, their application access. And be, you, you identify problems before they, they happen and you fix them or you report problems uh, very, very quickly and very accurately. Very difficult to do when you try to combine different vendors and different systems and somehow get it to work. Mm -hmm. What's the relationship, Neil, between SASE and Zero Trust to you? For us, Zero Trust and SASE are the same thing. Different vendors will tell you different things. We think they're the same thing. Because zero trust is all about the elimination of implicit trust in cybersecurity. Meaning, like I said before, traditionally, we would have different systems for different access use cases. So a user accessing an on-premise application will use a VPN, whereas a user accessing a cloud application will use a proxy, whereas a user accessing a SaaS application will use a CASB. And by definition, you check for different things with different solutions, mm -hmm. which means that there are things you check here and you don't check there. There are security levels that are different between here and there, which means that there are things that you implicitly trust about the user, the connectivity, the transaction, the data, whatever it is that you, you're looking for. So to us, zero trust is about eliminating all that implicit trust. It's not about not trusting anything. You have mm -hmm. to trust something at the end of the day. But it's about no matter who the user is, no matter where they are, no matter which technology they use to connect to the infrastructure, no matter what the application is and where the application is, you want to apply exactly the same level of security. Mm -hmm. Sounds like SASE. Yeah, yeah. So, so to us, zero trust and SASE are the same thing. Which makes it very easy for customers. You know, when you talk to customers and, and, and they tell you we have a zero trust project and we have a SASE project and you tell them, no, you have one project yeah. and you can take care of all your use cases and these two different concepts together yeah. saves you a lot of time, a lot of money yeah. and you're much more secure. Yeah, makes, makes a lot of sense because a lot of companies that I talk to, they basically struggle with practical ways to actually implement zero trust. People talk about it a lot. And SASE is yes. a great way to actually implement zero trust because of the consolidation. Yeah, if you remember just that zero trust is all about any user, any location, any connectivity method, SD1, IPsec, client, clientless, and so on, any application, any location, private, public, SAS, using the same security mm -hmm. or applying the same policy, applying the same security for all these different use cases. If all you'll remember is that this is SASE, mm -hmm. And that this is zero trust, mm -hmm. you're done. Brilliant. So I've heard you talk near about ZTNA 2.0 as some principles for zero trust. Could you expand on that a little bit, please? ZTNA stands for zero trust network access. It is part of zero trust. It's a specific use case of zero trust. And the reason it even gets attention as a separate thing is because there are vendors out there that don't do zero trust, meaning they don't do any user, any location, any technology, any application, any location, same system, they take a portion of that. Mm -hmm. So they would do uh, zero trust for users accessing on-premise applications 
or they will do zero trust for users accessing cloud applications, or they will try to do both with different systems, like the protein, the cloud vendors do that. So zero trust network access is about users accessing either traditional applications or users accessing cloud applications that are private. What we used to call VPN. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the reason we talk about ZTNA 2.0, we were forced by our competitors that are even making ZTNA an issue yeah. because it's not an issue. It's really part of any application, any location, any connectivity yep. and so on. Uh, the, the reason we talk about it is because they force us to talk about it. And what we're saying is the way they do ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Access, which is very different than the way they do accessing applications in the cloud, yep. doesn't make any sense. It is not zero trust, mm -hmm. because in zero trust, you need to do the same thing, no matter what the situation is. It is not sassy, because in one case, it's in the cloud, and in another case, it's not in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't think it's, we have enough time for that, but they don't support all applications. They don't support a lot of use cases. It's insecure, because they only inspect the first packet of a connection. They don't inspect the entire connection with the way their architecture has been set up. So... Again, we were forced mm -hmm. to even address the issue of ZTNA yeah. because some vendors are viewing it as a separate thing. Mm -hmm. And we address it with SASE. Yeah. And I think what I'm taking away from that is that no matter what kind of application it is, it's a private application, SaaS application, your internet website, browsing traffic, you should be able to apply the same types of security capabilities to all three. It shouldn't be a case where your private apps are being treated with, with a separate kind of engine for authentication and you're not able to do security there, right? So that, that could be a practical takeaway yeah. for the audience. Yeah, again, if there's one takeaway from our conversation, yeah. it is, and I'll say it for the one millionth time, <laughs> any user, any location, any connectivity method, yeah. any application in any location, yeah. private, public, yeah. SaaS, same security policy, yeah. same con same same system. You yeah. want to do it with one cloud edge delivered system. Awesome. Yeah. Going to save you a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of trouble. You'll be much more secure. Yeah. And you can focus on your business rather than on integrating twenty different solutions. Yeah, I, I heard uh, I heard someone uh, say this morning that repetition does not dilute the message. So it if you, you can't repeat it enough number of times. I think it's a very important principle. And I'm glad you said earlier, Nir, that we don't have enough time. Hopefully, that means you'll come back again and join us on another episode of the Sassy Show. Of course, whenever you invite me. Thank you. And before we let you go, enough talk about Sassy. I wanted to ask you, do you have a favorite movie that's related to cybersecurity maybe or maybe not? Because I'm asking all my guests this question. I don't know if it's related to cybersecurity, but uh, Austin Powers. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And why is that? Just, is this funny? I just like him. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, he's good. Mike Myers. Is Mike very, Myers is really good. Very talented yeah. actor. You know, Near, and I like both his. Uh, both his, his both his yeah, characters. His, his characters, three. yeah, yeah, million. Yeah, excellent. I don't know if there's a new one coming out or have they stopped releasing those. I have no idea. Thank you, Neer. and to our audience, thank you for joining us. I'm sure you learned a lot from our conversation with Neer, as did I. And if you want to continue to stay engaged with us, there's a QR code that's going to flash up on your screen. Please scan that and you'll be taken to a landing page which will present opportunities to engage with me and with our guests. You can follow me on LinkedIn as well and put your feedback and thoughts and opinions in the comment section. With that, that was this episode of The Sassy Show with Sid and Neer Zook. Thanks for joining us and see you next time.